In this video, we'll be talking about Control Bard. I used this build for my main character in one of my Honor Mode playthroughs, and it was super fun to play while also being extremely powerful. The main purpose of this build is to control the battlefield with enchantment and illusion spells. You will also be able to deal decent damage with ranged weapons and spells. And if you ever find yourself in a tough situation, you will have multiple escape options, as well as the ability to survive attacks from the strongest enemies in the game. This build comes online at level 8, but this guide also covers levels 1 to 7 if you want to play as a bard from the beginning of the game. This build has three phases. Phase 1 is a pure bard from level 1 to level 7. This will cover Act 1 and the beginning of Act 2. Phase 2 and Act 2 once you reach level 8. Phase 3 and Act 3 once you obtain the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel. Let's start by looking at the first 7 levels as a bard. Pick bard as your starting class. The cantrips won't matter too much. But as a bard, you must pick Vicious Mockery. Then from the list of available cantrips, I recommend Friends, Mage Hand, or Minor Illusion for utility. For the list of starting spells, there are a few good choices here. Dissonant Whispers, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, Thunder Wave, and Fairy Fire can all be useful early game. For utility, you can pick Disguise Self, Featherfall, Longstrider, or Speak with Animals, but those can be covered with potions or items. Pick your starting instrument. For ability points, go 16 Dexterity, 16 Charisma, and 14 Constitution. The remaining four points can be used for Strength, Intelligence, or Wisdom. Wisdom is a common saving throw in the game, so I recommend going no lower than 10 Wisdom. If you plan on getting the Hag's hair, go 17 Charisma instead of 16 and use the hair to increase your Charisma to 18. For skill proficiencies, pick Deception, Intimidation, Performance, or Persuasion if you're the party face. Other good choices include Sleight of Hands, Stealth, Investigation, Insight, and Perception. In combat, use your spells and a bow. For melee combat, use a shield and one-handed weapon with the finesse trait that scales with dexterity rather than strength. At level 2, you will get Jack of All Trades, which adds half of your proficiency bonus to ability checks that you are not proficient with. You will also get Song of Rest, which gives you an additional short rest. Pick another level 1 spell, and if you're not happy with one of your spells, you can replace it. At level 3, select College of Swords as your subclass. This will allow you to pick a fighting style. Pick 2 weapon fighting. Pick a level 2 spell. Cloud of Daggers is a very powerful early game spell especially when fighting groups of goblins and gnolls, Hold Person is another excellent choice. This spell can disable a powerful enemy should they fail a wisdom saving throw. For utility, you can pick Invisibility or Enhance Ability. Other viable options include Detect Thoughts, Heat Metal, See Invisibility, Shatter, and Silence. Next, replace one of the level 1 spells with another level 2 spell. I recommend keeping Dissonant Whispers and Tasha's hideous laughter throughout the game. At this point, you should be using two hand crossbows. You can get them from Damon in the Grove in Act 1. If you can't see them in his inventory, take a long rest. When in a fight, open with one of your level 2 spells like Cloud of Daggers or Hold Person, and then attack with your hand crossbows in subsequent turns. Spend your Bardic Inspiration on the Ranged Slashing Flourish which allows you to attack two enemies at once, but you can also target the same enemy with it. When needed, you can also use Defensive Flourish to increase your AC or Mobile Flourishing to teleport, but most of the time, Slashing Flourish is the one to use. Level 4 allows you to pick another cantrip and one more Level 2 spell. I recommend replacing another Level 1 spell with a Level 2 spell. At Level 4, you can also pick your first feat. Pick Sharpshooter, which will greatly increase your damage with ranged attacks. Sharpshooter can be toggled on and off. Most of the time, you should be fine leaving it on. However, when your chance to hit falls below 40%, consider toggling it off. Level 5 gives you access to level 3 spells. Glyph of Warding should be the most useful here. But Hypnotic Pattern and Plant Growth are also good. You can replace another level 1 spell, leaving you only with Dissonant Whispers and Tasha's Hideous Laughter. At level 6, the College of Swords Bard gains extra attack, which combined with being a full caster and the ability to attack twice with Slashing Flourish makes it an extremely powerful martial class. Pick another level 3 spell. At this point, you might not want to replace any more of your level 1 or level 2 spells, but it's up to you. 
At level 7, you can start using level 4 spells. The choices are not great here, apart from confusion, which is very good against groups of enemies. At level 8, it's time to respec. At this point, you should be in Act 2, and have obtained two of the three items that are necessary for this build. Gloves of Dexterity and Helmet of Arcane Acuity. Starting again with level 1, pick the fighter class and archery as your fighting style. Go 16 Charisma, 16 Intelligence, and 14 Constitution. Go 18 Charisma if you boosted it with the Hag's Hair. Use the remaining points on Wisdom, Strength, or Dexterity with Wisdom being the recommended stat. The Gloves of Dexterity will increase your Dexterity to 18, so you don't need to spend Ability points on Dexterity. But if your Dexterity is below 10, you will get a minus one to Dexterity dice rolls and checks before the bonus from the gloves is added to the roll. Then, pick the proficiencies that suit your playstyle. The one level in Fighter gives you proficiency with heavy armor and longbow proficiency. Now is the time to ditch the hand crossbows and use a longbow instead. The Titan Stringbow is an excellent choice combined with the elixir of Hill Giant Strength. The Fighter level also gives proficiency in constitution saving throws which are important when making a concentration saving throw to keep concentrating on a control spell like Hold Person at level 2 multi-class into Wizard. Pick three cantrips. Ideally, pick the cantrips that you won't be able to select from the bard levels, for example, Firebolt or Ray of Frost, or utility cantrips like Mage Hand or Minor Illusion. Pick Shield from the list of spells. As a wizard, you will be able to memorize spells from scrolls. It doesn't matter too much which spells from the list you pick, as you should have access to them provided you have the scrolls. The one level in Wizard gives you access to the Wizard Spellbook, which is separate to your Bard Spellbook, and scales with Intelligence. With one level in Wizard and 16 Intelligence, you will be able to prepare four extra spells. While not a lot, these spells will be complementary to your Bard spells. You can swap them in and out before an encounter, depending on what is needed. At level 3, multi-class into Bard and repeat levels 1 to 6 from earlier in the video until you are level 8. Let's look at your character at level 8. Use the Helmet of Arcane Acuity that gives you plus 1 to spell attack rolls and DC whenever you deal damage with the weapon attack. Start a fight by attacking with your longbow using Slashing Flourish when needed. When your spell save DC is boosted with Arcane Acuity, it makes it nearly impossible for enemies to make a save against your control spells, like Hold Person, Tasha's Hideous Laughter or Hypnotic Pattern. Wear heavy or medium armor and a shield for increased survivability, and a finesse weapon in your main hand. You can also use a finesse weapon in your offhand if you don't want to use a shield. But at this point in the game, using a shield is better. You can learn spells from scrolls up to level 4 and have 4 of them prepared. I recommend using the shield spell at all times, as it's an excellent defensive tool that lets you use your level 1 spell slots that are otherwise not very useful later in the game. At level 9, you can once again pick a level 4 spell from the bard list and replace one of the spells from the bard spell book. Level 10 is the same but you can now pick your second feat. There are a few viable options here. The best option is Dual Wielder. This will allow you to use weapons that aren't light in your main and offhand slots, while also giving you plus one to your armor class. There are many staffs in Act 3, like Staff of Spell Power, that come with powerful passive bonuses. This feat will allow you to use weapons like that with other powerful weapons like Rhapsody. The second option is to take Ability Improvement and take two points in Charisma. This is best if you want to keep using a shield in your offhand. The final option is to choose the Alert feat. It will give you a plus five bonus to initiative rolls and make it so your character can't be surprised. If you start fights with normal initiative rolls like I do, without surprising the enemy or using invisibility potions, then high initiative is extremely important as it means you will get to move before enemies when the fight starts. At this point, you might be in Act 3. Here's where you can pick the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel from the Akabi Encounter 
at the Circus of the Last Days in Rivington. This ring completes the build and allows you to cast illusion and enchantment spells as a bonus action after hitting an enemy with a weapon attack. After attacking with your bow and getting stacks of arcane acuity, you will now be able to use a powerful control spell, often with a 100% chance of success, as a bonus action. You can upcast spells like Hold Person or Command, which you will get at level 12, to control large groups of enemies. At level 11, you get access to level 5 spells. Hold Monster and Dominate Person are both good choices here. At level 12, you get to pick another cantrip and a level 5 spell. But most importantly, you gain access to Magical Secrets. Magical Secrets allow you to pick two spells from a wide list of spells from all the other classes. There are spells on this list that cannot be obtained with scrolls or your bard levels, so this choice is very important. The best spells on the list for this build are Counterspell and Command. With this, the build is now complete.